Hello guys, Sean Thompson here and welcome back to another Mazda build video. Today we have a list as long as our arm, three days to do it until the event and uh, aye, without further ado, let's get into this week's video. All right, first project, spacers. Before we're rubbing, as you can see, where it's a wee bit blacker, we've been rubbing on the spring, so we need to try and sort that. Um, and the first option we have, obviously, is a 25mm spacer. Slots on there, and that should bring out enough, and hopefully give us a wee bit of gap so it doesn't rub on the springs anymore. talking these up now because they're coming straight back off to do the arches I just want to fix this problem first in case we need to order new parts to fix more problems but I have a finger gap now between that and the suspension so let's settle down and see where we're sitting at after that so we've got a lot of camber in the back now with these spacers added hopefully when I sit down that fixes right let's let it down gently and hopefully we get that gap We'll need to do something else. I've got a perfect gap, I don't know if you can see that in there, but I've got a perfect gap to wiggle my fingers on this side. But we'll need to adjust the camber on this side because she's touching it. I can't even get my finger in between the tyre and the spring. On the camber. It's just a wee bit more aggressive on that side, I think. All right, well, I've claimed up, I've claimed up with a plan here. I don't know if it's right, but it's what we're going with. Um, and it is working, so it's probably going to upset a lot of folk. But we're cutting this, right? We're elongating this hole. This is what the boy John recommended I do as well. So we're elongating this hole so that bolt can slide further towards the exhaust pipe. And then, of course, we'll weld it up, and that'll give us our camber. And obviously, to bring the two together, we're using professional equipment but we need a new Dremel uh, bit because my Dremel's discs are all cut so now we're going to quickly go ahead and fit these hard top bolts while we're waiting for that to come quite easy to install that bolt here comes out and then this longer one goes in it gives a hard top something to clip into there we go nice and easy <sighs> right first time well let's see how this goes should probably practice first but that's boring I need to clean that off a little bit more. Right, I think that might be it there. No, it's not. Not there yet. That was on fire there. Oh, Jesus Christ. Alright. Now bear in mind, I don't know how to weld, so uh, uh, be kind. That is it. Uh, Pretty much on there. <laughs> I don't know, why was I going to touch that there? But aye, aye, that's on there. And obviously that was the original bolt hole. Now we'll slide her back to there. It's very warm. That's a fuel tank. <laughs> but it's okay. Because it's only this side. This is the hardest side first. I don't know why I did it first. But anyways, let's see if that fixes it. <sighs> I'm going to kill myself for this thing, man. All right, move back. <sighs> Oh, oh, 
nicht schlagen, weil. Was, Bär? <lacht> no, nicht schlagen. Also, noch nicht mal. Alright, so this really hasn't got a plan at all today. Um, the recording. But, anyways, we have fixed the camera, as you can see. That is perfect. It doesn't stick out too far past the arches. Arches. Gives us a wee bit of clearance. Bob's your uncle. Now we're on to the front. Obviously, we've fitted the front spacers. And uh, now we have the same issue. Well, we have the opposite issue. Now we've got negative instead of positive camera. So, aye, I need to make a list because my head is absolutely everywhere. And I just need to write down everything we need to get done for the Mazda. Look at that handwriting. Beautiful. Right, so I don't actually have all that much. I've got to fix the camber, fit seats and harness, clean up and fill arches, service and fit new battery, fit clutch, fit mud flaps, rust protect, fix rust, paint, test, done. <sighs> Two days. <sighs> Two days left. And I'm not a mechanic. Right, so for the next job, and I honestly don't think I may be able to do this, I need to build a radiator guard, right, to protect the radiator down there that you can't see now. You can't see it because it's too dark. I'm going to make some sort of a protector out of scrap steel. So we've got two of these bits and we've got four of those bits there that have little legs on them. And uh, for some reason I think I can do it. I know I can't, but I suppose I'll find out in five minutes. Alright, maybe I was wrong. Maybe I was wrong. Um, um, I'm using safety glasses now because mine is right up close to the metal here. But I've cut a little corner out here, obviously bent it, that's going to be the under chassis bit. And then I'm just basically bending this up here and seeing if that'll work. And so far, <laughs> it's actually going not bad. Maybe I was wrong. There you go, that is it, bent, cornered. Obviously it sits under the car like that. And that runs along the chassis and then that touch. That's a wee bit bent over, that could be doing back a bit. But, that's what it used to look like. We're going to weld the seams up. I think I might have actually just done something there. I'm quite proud of myself. Alright, that's me done for the night. It is 8 o'clock. I've been at this 12 hours now. We've got the brackets up there made. Look at those brackets up there made. We'll work out to attach them tomorrow. And uh, aye, thank you all for what. I'm not ending the video for you. And ah, uh, see you all tomorrow. Goodbye. Alright, it's the next day. And in true ADHD fashion, we're not going to start off where we left, which was protecting the radiator. We're going to start something completely different. So we've already fit, fit, uh, fixed the steering wheel. We've done that this morning just while I was waiting on this to charge. Obviously, we've already fitted the spacers. But we've still got a hell of a lot to do. And only two days to do it. We have half fixed the camber. We just need to fix the front. Um, I'm quickly going to go and do this. Fit the passenger seat and harness. And then that's another thing ticked off the list. And it uh, should be a fairly easy job anyways. So, aye. All right, super easy to install. First up, we're adding uh, these bolts here and a bit of thread lock to here and to here. All right, so that's them. Now we've got to do two here and two here and obviously drill through the floor. All right, once you've cut the hole, that goes through. Under here, which is right here, and you attach this wee plate onto her. And then, uh, hi, but this is the tricky bit. The have got to be a bit of an octopus. And then using a wee screwdriver, we just tighten them round. Whatever it is, there's that. And just tighten them. Just like that. And then we've now clipped on, the, all, all they do is just clip on or wrap round the harnesses, adjusted them to the size, and now we'll put the seat in the middle. Then onto the bucket seat we add the mountain bracket and we set it quite high up because it's, well, it's a wee bit low otherwise. So that's that on. Now we've got to put it in the car. Put these four bolts in either of the holes. Alright, so brackets were on the wrong way. But 
she's in. As you can see, the bolts are just there. It's a bit tricky to get into, but not in a wee span I can do. Just get in and keep tightening, but I need to be where the GoPro is, so uh, see the bit. That's all lovely and fitted. Next job is a snorkel. Now I could have brought up the side here, but it's gonna look stupid because obviously the thinness of the pillar. So I'm thinking through the cab, onto the dashboard there. It will still be taking air in, I think, and it shouldn't get too wet because remember, this is mud belly. There's gonna be mud well over the height of this car. So I think it might be the best idea. A snorkel would look nicer though. Knock tie, back when I used to take care of her. New air filters and all that. All right, one of the next jobs here. And it's not gonna be pretty, is filling in these arches. Now, originally I wish I'd cut them, it bend them rather than cut them, but it was too late. I got too carried away and I was cutting up here and now obviously I've got this gap. But I don't want all the mud to get trapped in. So I'm just gonna expand it and foam it up, put a wee bit of filler on. Then that way the duck can't get in, in theory. All right, there's been a lot of dicking about today. Let's talk you through what I've done. It is a couple hours since I've last, but successful. These are solid and on. I'm just gonna put a strut in between. Stickers have been ordered. I've written, oh boys, it's Tuesday, eight o'clock, right? Just to put this into, yeah. So what have I got, Wednesday, half a Thursday. Not really though, because I want to be going down the road. Um, because I've got a job to do as well to pay the diesel down. And uh, aye, it's not looking good. But so far we're just under here. Uh, and we're doing the clutch now. I'm just quickly uh, draining the clutch oil. And we're going to see the viscosity, I think, is the word people use. I don't really, I don't really know what I'm doing. Oh, there we go. And then we'll drain the gearbox. Here we are, I wonder if I can. Ah, phew. And we'll also drain it the, the, uh, the engine at the same time, because we're changing all those fluids tomorrow. It's a little bit mucky, I'm not gonna lie. Um, if I just get the camera here. It's a wee bit of, wee bit of mucky. But I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. It looks very metallic. Pretty sure it's probably a bad thing. All right, here's literally two hours since I last in a clip. My hands are lovely, and that is the prop shaft out. Four bolts, all of them had to get grinded off. I'm, I want to weld the diff, but I'm looking at these bolts that are connected to the diff. Eh? That is exactly what I had to go through. That's another four cuts, four cuts. Whatever's up there as well, I'll look at them. Like There's like at least 10 or 11 bolts that he cut off. And I'm not gonna lie to you, I just don't have time for that. So I think we're just gonna have to run with the regular diff. It's probably not gonna be as fun or as good, but we are facing a good, well, that took me two hours to get the, all the gearbox bolts out and those four, probably about half an hour just in cutting those bolts. And that's a relatively good access, whereas the rest is all up. I'm not even, I don't even know why I'm explaining it to yourselves because I already know what I'm doing. I'm not, can take the weld in the diff, right? It'll be fine. I hope. I probably won't be. But I just don't have time. We have a day left, plus whatever I work tonight, it's eight o'clock now. If I can get a clutch in tonight and go home, then tomorrow is physically just like work, like just getting a looking pretty, putting the fluids back in, our filters, all that jazz. All that is metal shavings off the bottom of the plug. That is a lot. Hopefully we still have a gearbox left. That was a long ass process, but here you can see, there is the clutch. Um, I don't have the greatest of light, but this isn't a video on how to install clutches. This is just me installing at nine o'clock at night now. I think it's more half nine, but I'm not looking at my phone, it's just depressing me. I've got the clutch over here in this nice wee box. Look at that, we've got the clutch, the bearing, and then that's the front pole as well. Looking forward to getting that in. But it's a long way away, and I honestly don't know if I'm going to get the clutch back in. And I pretty much ruined the exhaust taking it out because too many rusty bolts, and I just had to keep cutting the bolts. I'll see where it goes. Well, oh, 
Let's have a look here. There's the old clutch. Cool. And then there's the front plate. I'm not a mechanic. I just like to pretend. But it still looks like there's plenty of plenty of wear on that. I was always told to look for the grooves. But uh, aye. Let's go get a new one and let's fit it. Still don't know what I'm doing. There is the new one. They kind of look similar, but this one's meant to have better compounds and stuff. I don't know. I'm just... I don't know. It's half nine. Should I go to bed? I thought it was half eight. It's half nine. Should I go to bed? I'm still here. Well, Alright, so new clutch fitted. Obviously new bearing fitted as well. Comes part of the kit. Might as well. Now we've just got to put it all back together. Hope for the best. Put the transmission fluid back in. Do a bit of tidying up because it's a bomb site. Aye. Aye, good. Alright, it's the next day and the final day for working on it. We still need to put the gearbox back in it. I gave up last night. We still need to put the manifold in it. We still need to can fix the arches. I dented it with the forklift and that last night as well. So we need to fix this because that's nae handy. Obviously, paint it if we have time, put the stickers on it, all that. No, it just gets so much to do in so little time. But I'm, today I'm tired and I can't be arsed if I'm being honest. So we're just doing me wee shitey job. One of the first ones we're doing here is just changing the spark plugs. As you can see, that one was before versus new. We bit of carbon build up, but uh, aye. New spark plugs. Oh, that could have been good. I've just bent it. Aye, good. Thought I'd give my, my Mazda a wee bit of coolant. Um, <laughs> um, so I don't know if you can see that or it not, but there we go. That might just get you. There's, there's nothing in there. I can't really get it. I can't get the camera angle. I can't get the light right. But that is dry. <laughs> no, it's been it. All right. I've put it off all day. The boys are away, I can now use the forklift. I know it's probably not gonna be, but hopefully, this is the last time we have it up here. We've done the spark plugs, all, all everything I had planned, eh, maintenance wise, literally all we gotta do now, is get the gearbox and get her running again. And she's pretty much good to go. Now I know this video pro probably hasn't been as easy to follow, um, I just kind of, when I do projects, I just kind of do one thing and then get bored and then go to something else and probably don't do it as good the first time because I do it like in four different sessions, if that makes sense. But that's how I do it. I just, if I get bored of a task, I just, I can't do it. Otherwise, I end up rushing it and making it ten times worse. So I just kind of chop and change. <laughs> when you see it from that angle. <laughs> All right, it's the next morning. I'm disheartened. I just, I'm fed up. I don't want to go anymore. Just everything. I just, I'm, I'm done. I cracked the sump. I cracked the sump last night. I thought the gearbox was on straight. It's obviously not been on straight. It's cracked the sump. Luckily I'm surrounded by a good bunch of pals who reckon they can fit a new sump down at Mudbillies. Obviously actual mechanics, not just fannies like me that think they can do things. Downside is you can't get a sump. So I'm gonna have to, gonna have to buy a sump, eh, not buy a sump, I'm gonna have to buy an engine for 200 pounds and take the sump off it, cause you can't buy sumps for the love of the money at the moment. 
so we'll see when we get to. I honestly, I'm happy just going down and watching at this point. But everyone seems to think they can fit it. And they probably know a lot better than me how to fit it. It's a proper big job. I'm just done. All right, here's what that. She's uh, she's not ready, but she's as ready as she'll ever be. We've got bad negative camber in the front. We'll fix the issue of it rubbing here. Obviously, we'll put the stickers on. And I stupidly ordered blue stickers. So, that one was a um, As for the one on the back, I was put it on the window. And that fixes that issue. Um, but aye, it still doesn't run, there's no gearbox in it and all that. But, we'll see what happens, we're just going to quickly go load her up. Start driving. so the GoPro audio didn't work here unfortunately but as you can see we have just discovered that we've got a flat tire in the trailer and as you can see it is not on there at all all right I know this video has probably been a bit all over the place but I'm sorry I mean I'm trying my hardest here but today has been a horrible day that is the tire fix now it was a nail through the tire all sorted I then ordered the wrong uh, colored vinyls it's all sorted now the only thing I need sorted is my gearbox other than that, everything is kind of falling into place. But I'd be lying if I said it wasn't a little bit done. But we'll continue on and see what happens. But anyways, here we are, loaded up. Obviously, we've got big Drew's CRV, Mark's quad on the back. I'm a bit worried about overnighting with this on the back end because it's an easy grab. You know what I mean? So see, I don't know what to do with that. Just get a set of keys. Maybe take the keys out. Anyways, and then of course the Mazda up the neck without its, uh, without its gearbox. I mean, that is the clutch, you can see that on bit there. But uh, aye, nonetheless, they're all loaded, ready to go. Obviously it's got its branding on it, it's uh, AMT Coachworks on the front. And uh, aye, let's get on the road. But that one will be in the next video, thank you all for watching. Don't forget to rate, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next video, where hopefully we're racing and we have a Mazda with a clutch in it. Alright, good.